Welcome to Boundless Herbs, the podcast where we explore the amazing world of plants and how they can help us achieve balance and wellness in our lives. I'm your host, Sabrina Gwynn, a certified clinical herbalist with over 10 years of experience in holistic health. And this is the What the Heck series, where we'll explore what the heck different terms and concepts mean in the fascinating field of alternative medicine. Whether you're curious, skeptical, or just looking for some new insights, this podcast is for you. Join me as I dive into and simplify topics like acupuncture, aromatherapy, herbalism, and more. Let's go beyond overcomplication and reach understanding. Let's get boundless. And just a disclosure, I am not a doctor. I cannot treat, diagnose, or cure any disease. Everything is intended for educational purposes only. Please consult with your primary care practitioner before starting or adding in any new protocols into your daily life. Welcome back, friends. So today in the What the Heck series, we're talking about what the heck is fasting. Fasting is a practice that involves abstaining from food and or drink, either partially or entirely, for a certain period of time. Fasting can have various purposes, such as religious, health, or weight loss reasons. Depending on the type and duration of fasting, there are many benefits and risks associated with it. Some of the benefits of fasting are longevity. Some animal studies have shown that restricting calories can reduce the risk of chronic diseases and extend lifespan. Cancer prevention. Fasting may lower the levels of insulin-like growth factor, which is a hormone that stimulates cell growth and may contribute to tumor development. Neurological health. Fasting may improve cognitive function, protect against neurodegenerative diseases, and enhance brain plasticity. Blood sugar control. Fasting may improve insulin sensitivity and lower blood glucose levels, which can help prevent or manage diabetes. Some of the potential risks of fasting are hunger and cravings. Fasting can cause physical discomfort, such as headaches, fatigue, dizziness, and nausea. It can also trigger psychological effects, such as irritability, mood swings, anxiety, and obsession with food. It could have consequences like overeating and binging. Fasting can disrupt the normal eating patterns and lead to excessive hunger and compensatory eating during non-fasting periods. This can result in weight gain, digestive problems, and even eating disorders. It can cause nutritional deficiencies. Fasting can limit the intake of essential nutrients such as vitamins, minerals, protein, and fiber. This can cause weakness, anemia, hair loss, bone loss, and other health issues. It can lead to medical complications. Fasting can interfere with certain medications or medical conditions such as diabetes, hypoglycemia, hypertension, kidney disease, liver disease, or even pregnancy. Fasting can also increase the risk of dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, gallstones, and kidney stones. To fast safely and effectively, it is important to take some precautions before, during, and after fasting. Some of these precautions are, one, consult your primary care practitioner. Before starting any type of fasting regime, check in to see if there's any contradictions or considerations for your body. Your practitioner may also monitor the health status and adjust your medications during your fast. Plan ahead. It is helpful to prepare for fasting by gradually reducing the food and drink intake for several days or weeks before you start a fast. This can help ease the transition and avoid shock to your body. It is also recommended to avoid high sugar foods before fasting to prevent blood sugar spikes and crashes. Another tip is staying hydrated. During fasting, it is essential to drink enough water or other fluids such as herbal teas or broth to prevent dehydration and flush out toxins. However, it is important to avoid caffeinated or alcoholic beverages because they can lead to more dehydration or even impair your liver's function. The last tip is to break your fast properly. After fasting, it is important to resume eating slowly and carefully. It is advisable to start with small portions of light foods that are easy to digest, such as fruits, vegetables, soups, or yogurt. It is also important to avoid overeating or binging on high-calorie or high-fat foods that can cause indigestion or weight gain. There are various methods of fasting that vary in the number of fast days and the calorie allowances. Some of the common types of fasting are a 12-hour fast. This type of fast involves choosing a 12-hour window every day to abstain from food and drink. For example, one may fast from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. This type of fast is relatively easy to follow and may suit beginners. 16-hour fast. This type of fast involves choosing a 16-hour window every day. 
14 hours for females is recommended, to abstain from food and drink. For example, one may fast from 8 p.m. to noon, and this type of fast is also known as the 16-8 method. 5-2 fast. This type of fast involves eating normally for five days a week and reducing calorie intake to 25%, which would be 500 calories for females and 600 calories for males, on two non-consecutive days a week. Another example is alternate day fast. This type of fast involves alternating between days of normal eating and days of complete or partial fasting. Time-restricted fast. This type of fast involves choosing a specific time every day to eat, such as eight hours, six hours, or four hours, and then fasting for the rest of the day. Then there are religious fasts. This type of fast involves following the fasting rules of a certain religion, such as Islam, Christianity, Judaism, or Buddhism. For example, Muslims fast from dawn to sunset during the month of Ramadan. Fasting can be a beneficial practice for some people if done correctly and under supervision. However, fasting can also be dangerous if done improperly or excessively. Therefore, it is important to be aware of the pros and cons of fasting and follow some guidelines to ensure safety and effectiveness. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment and ask away. We all learn by asking questions, and I'm a firm believer that we're never done learning. So I don't know everything, and I don't claim to, but I'm always up to learn something new. Up next in the What the Heck series is, what is the microbiome? Thank you for listening to Boundless Herbs, the podcast that takes you on a journey of discovery and empowerment through the amazing world of plants. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new and useful about how herbs can support your health and well-being. I'm Sabrina Gwynn, your host and guide in this herbal adventure. If you want to learn more about me, my services, and my products, you can visit my website at www.boundlessherbs.org. You can also follow me on social media under Boundless Herbs and subscribe to my newsletter, Herbal Horizons, to get updates, discounts, and exclusive content. And don't forget to rate, review, and share this podcast with your friends and family. It really helps me grow and reach more people who can benefit from herbal wisdom. Until next time, be well, stay herbaceous, and happy healing.